Alright, alright, I'll admit, I forgot about this weapon. Did you ever have that? So many weapons in Warframe, so many amazing and cool weapons that you just forget that something exists? I'm guilty of that, but I'm gonna do justice to the boss mode today, my friends. We're gonna be revisiting this absolutely insane primary weapon. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable, something that a newer player can get into, but fear not, we're only gonna be treating that as a jumping off point, and we're gonna go for a full end game setup. We're talking about prime mods, galvanized mods, a ribbon, we're gonna take this puppy to steel path and put it through its paces. That said though, please bear in mind that my building guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you might already know some of this stuff, or most of this stuff, please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the boss mode. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Basmu is a, uh, well, it's a bit of a mix between the Kuvanukor or the Cycron, the Tenant Cycron, and the Exceltra. Essentially, it's a Jack of all trades, master of none. But when you put the two halves together, something special truly comes out. And yes, this is a sentient weapon or an amalgam weapon or something of the sort. As you can see, the jaws from time to time do kind of like clamp down. It doesn't have any actual effect on the damage, it's just a little bit of a visual thing. So two fire modes, primary fire mode is an Exceltra. <laughs> Basically it fires projectiles even though they seem not to be very accurate, the accuracy is actually quite good and upon impact they will be exploding in a very small radius. Nothing you should worry about. But my friends, this is one of those self-recharging weapons, I kid you not. Take a look at my ammo, 21, boom, back to 21 in 0.4 seconds, I kid you not, that's how fast that one is. But if you manage to empty the entire Megazashu, one, two, three. You're gonna be releasing three pulses. Now those pulses are gonna be dealing 10 true damage. Listen to me, true damage. How often do you hear that in Warframe? True damage to all targets around you, well, in the vicinity, and it's gonna be healing you for 10x the amount you dealt. Uh, throughout the free pulses, of course, so 10x per each. Now, that sounds really pompous and fantastic, and it can be pretty good if you got something like a Vauban or a Nidus, or their abilities to clump them all up together, and you can get yourself some nice healing like that. But normally, the trick with this weapon is to run from mission to mission and stop firing right before the ammunition goes out of your mag completely. Stop on one, stop on two, something of the sort. Why? Because even though this is a cool effect, it adds one more second to your reload. So from that blazing 0.4 seconds, you're looking at 1.4 seconds for a 21 mag. It's not exactly fantastic. So do bear that one in mind. Now, when this weapon first came out, the reload mechanic was a little bit abusable, all right? It's not abusable anymore, so forget about it. Forget about it, forget about it. Now, this one also has a secondary fire mode. In secondary fire mode, this one will be firing two snake-like projectiles. It's, it's essentially a beam weapon in secondary fire mode. The problem with these beams, they only have a limited range of about 10 meters. So you see I'm 14, 30, 30 meters till the target and I'm not touching it. Come a little bit closer and the beams will latch on and they will latch on to 5 additional targets as well. 7 meters in between targets but you lose 50% of the damage with each chain jump. So do bear that one in mind. From this point of view it resembles more the Amprex rather than anything else because that one loses a whole bunch of damage. I think also 50% from jump to jump but this is in secondary fire mode a full beam weapon and you do got two beams out of it which is pretty cool and it kind of latches onto a target right it kind of latches onto a target and then jumps from target to target that's pretty cool and you can use it like something like a primer if you wish because this puppy even by itself applies a whole lot of statuses to your target did you notice did you notice that many statuses so first of all the projectile from the primary fire mode will be applying heat procs to your target and in secondary fire mode you got electricity that's without you modding it for anything so I already got electricity and heat procs on my target damage over time with damage over time <laughs> what does that spell laser <laughs> you guessed it vital on top of that to make them even more powerful and I wonder what element also deals a lot of damage over time hmm you get how that one works 
So yeah, that's pretty much it for the weapons functionality. It may look like ours, but honestly, this one is pretty cool when it comes to Warframe weapons. It's not your run-of-the-mill assault rifle, I can say at least that much. It's cooler than the Exceltra because it has that cool fire mode. It's too bad it looks like this. Can you put a skin on this puppy, new? Can't put a skin on this puppy, which is horrible. And honestly, the the fashion possible. I mean, it's horrible. Like most sentient things, they got that weird texture on top. But enough about cosmetics. Let's get back to the actual stats. Mod capacity, 60 out of 60. But yours might have only 30 out of 30. Jump into the actions of the boss move and plug in an unlocking catalyst. This one will be doubling your mod capacity. And it's 100% worth it on the boss move. This is a great weapon. Now you can play 20 plat to have one installed, you can also farm one from Nightwave. Nightwave right now is on a bit of a break, but it'll be back soon. Ish, I think in about a week or so. You can also get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie and some events in Warframe also feature an unlocking catalyst as a possible or guaranteed reward, even fully built, which is fantastic. So you don't have to waste the um, resources and the time. Now my Basmo has been formatted a total of six times. You're, you're not gonna have to do this. I format this for testing because I try all sorts of ribbons and mod combinations so you don't have to. For the weapon, but I recommend you, you can get away with something like three, maximum of four forma. It's not exactly a forma light weapon, so do bear that one in mind. In the empty arcane slot, of course you should unlock this one. This is raw power. You're probably gonna go with Primary Merciless. Honestly, it's damage over time, kills, you're not gonna kill people directly. People targets directly with something like, uh, so you can get the most out of Deadhead. And Primary Dexterity, of course, if you're gonna be using it in tandem with your melee weapon. I would still vouch for Dexterity. The reload speed is fantastic. Pity about the ammo that they removed from this one, but what can you do? In most primaries, this is still a BIS or best in slot. <laughs> Never mind. In the Exodus slot, well, if you ever have ammo issues, what ammo issues? The weapon recharges by itself. See what I did? See what I did? Honestly, I would recommend 100% you go with Terminal Velocity. It helps the projectiles from the primary fire mode, means that you're leading your targets less. Again, we got projectile travel speed, yes? And you want to go for headshots, yes? For obvious... You don't know why? Oh, come on. That's a 10-minute conversation. Link the cards right now to find out why. Trust me, you need to know. That said, leading your targets less is fantastic, which means more DPS for you because you're landing your shots on your targets more consistently, more headshots. Terminal Velocity is the kind of mod that will increase your DPS and it will make your gameplay smoother, but I can't put a number on it because I don't know how many more headshots you will get with this one or how many more shots will land in the target and not in the walls. So this is a fantastic DPS mod, it just doesn't quantify over here. You get what I'm saying? Hopefully you get that. Accuracy is gonna be 20, we don't really care all that much, it works fine, fire rate of 12, which is pretty good, solid, magazine of 21. I love the fact, ooh, the reload was 0.2, I remember 0.4, so the reload is actually 0.2, unless, of course, again, you empty the entire magazine. 21 is the kind of magazine I don't really like on a primary weapon that fires this fast with a fire rate of 12, but, but, if you get used to the weapon, after playing a couple of missions and you learn to stop firing when you have two free in the magazine, essentially, it's... Shoot, kill, shoot, kill, shoot, kill. You're not really gonna feel that downtime, and I believe this small little mechanic here is what makes the Basmo so special. Not only, but this one too. Noise alarming, for obvious reason. Riven this for 4 out of 5. This is not a popular weapon. That's weird, because I did a pool of a pool, and I asked you guys, hey, which weapon do you want me to review? And this one came out on top, beating even the meme options like the MK1 button and the Stug. Granted, what I didn't tell you guys is that I'm gonna do them in whatever order I want, but that's not important. What is important? Trigger automatic and the damage is gonna be critical chance 15%. I... I know... Not all that fantastic, but 15% is above the minimum threshold that you should build primary weapons for crit. So, yeah, we're still gonna build this one for crit. 2.0 critical multiplier, which is decent. Status chance is high. Considering all the shots you put into your target, 30% is fantastic. Especially considering that when it comes to the projectiles from the primary fire mode, since that's what we're talking about right now, you got two sources of damage and two sources of potentially applying a proc. One, the projectile physically making contact with a target, which will be dealing this damage right here, and two, the projectile explosion, which will be dealing this damage right here. So as you can see, the explosion doesn't deal as much damage as the projectile hitting it, so you're not gonna be aiming for the feet with this one. Electricity damage, heat damage. Now this part right here refers to the beam portion of the weapon. The secondary fire mode, this is a trigger held. Of course, accuracy of free is not really all that relevant because as you saw, once a beam hits a target, it kind of latches onto it. It's pretty cool, the same fire rate, the same magazine, multi-shot of two because you do fire two beams by default and the effect of multi-shot will be proportional on this one, which is absolutely fantastic. Again, more beams and all whatnot. So for example, if you take multi, 
in the shot, you put this one here, you go right here to 3.2 with Vigilante armaments alone. Because of this, it's extremely important, especially if you guys decide to go for a gas build. Gas builds on this one, since we're on the subject, are viable, but mm, not gonna be as good as the standard, sadly. Same Riven Dispo, of course, they're held. Uh, damage per projectile, you're gonna be having a critical chance of 2.0, so that's gonna be absolutely terrible, but the critical multiplier on this one is off the charts at 4.0. I think this might be the highest in the game. Either this or 5.0 critical multiplier, which is insane. So of course, bonus critical after effects such as Kavat buff or Arcane Avenger or Harrow are gonna be working beautifully well with the secondary fire mode of the boss. Oh man, with some vital on top, it's gonna be Joseph. Says for projectile 30%, which is, is, a, is good considering all in all, considering electricity damage as before, a total of 24 because you got two beams. Now, my friends, let's have a look at a standard build, shall we? Now this is what you might call an introductory level setup. I want you to treat this one as a jumping off point to the boss mode. Maybe you're more newer into the game, yes, you don't have all the mods, you wanna take it slowly, you will treat this as a jumping off point, and from this point onwards, you will build on this. Damage duration, multi-shot with split chamber, and vigilante armament, so you gotta go for the double multi-shot mods on this one. Critical chance and critical damage reduce the critical delay and vital sense. We also got the 260-60 vital mods, malignant force, rhyme rounds, and of course hunter munitions since we have a critical chance of 45%. Dude, look at the critical multiplier. 10.6, dude. 10.6 with vital sense alone. And you can get even more. You can get even more. Critical damage. If you choose to use bladed rounds, that's another 120, dude. It's gonna be insane. What, what was that gonna be? That's gonna be like over 15, 16 critical multiplier. But you're gonna have to get your critical chance from somewhere else. Again, this is the beam, not the primary fire mode. But we're gonna be testing out the weapon like so, and then we're gonna make a few changes here and there. Now, this time, I'm gonna be spawning everything and it's mama. I got Moa, I got Exogogstad, because you guys kept insisting on Exogogstad. I got Ancient Healer, I got Corrupted Heavy Goons, which are still the benchmark, and we're gonna be testing out this puppy. Now, uh, this build is an introductory level build, but that doesn't mean that the weapon won't be able to kick ours. Now, granted, I'm testing on some anti-Moa, which are pretty easy to kill, but... Let's go for the Corrupted Heavy Goons headshots. Look at that, absolutely blown to kingdom come. I don't even need fancy mods on this one because I'm putting so many statuses into my target, so many damage over time as gifts. I got heat, I got slash, I got electricity, and I got vital on my target. And if I want to, I can prep them with the secondary fire mode, then come in with the primary fire mode and blow them away. Absolutely freaking insane. I think that the trick to using this weapon is to learn when to stop firing. Did I mention that four times already? Well, this is the fifth time. Learn when to stop firing, and from mission to mission, you will have an absolute blast with this one. Let's try out some ancient healers and all whatnot. Use the secondary fire for the... Even the secondary fire destroys them. Look, 22, 22 on that one. 22 electricity procs and the usual 10 vital procs. You'll get 10 vital procs really quick. Absolutely destroy that target. But you know why? That has infested health, if I remember right, and takes more damage from vital damage, which we do have on the weapon. Electricity there, dealing the damage over time, alongside slash and heat as well. My friends, I cannot honestly believe how well this one performs across multiple enemies, multiple enemy types, with just standard mods alone. Oh, and here's the Exo Gogstad, the Gogstad. So again, secondary to prep him if I want to. Look at that. 10 vitals, 26 electricities, absolutely destroying that guy. As for the Gogstad, go for headshots, my friends. Don't fear. Don't fear the Gogstad. Hit him in the head. Hit him. Her? It's a her. Hit her in the head. In the head. Wait, if I said that, that sounds wrong. That sounds wrong. Hit it. Hit it. There we go. We're gonna go for it. Hit it in the head. And everybody's dead. But I think one of the targets just fell off. It just kind of gave up. It was like, nope, I'm done with this. I'm out. Standard build with nothing special there is nothing expensive on this build my friends and if you're low on endo because i know you're a newer player i know brah not only do i not have all the mods but i don't have all the endo to max this stuff up the only mod here that sucks up a lot of endo is gonna be serration hey listen leave two from the top trust me it's gonna be fine and that's pretty much it for the new player portion of the guy. Let's take a look at something a bit more maxed out. Of course, we're going to be using Galvanized Chamber instead of the normal version. We don't have Serration anymore because we got plenty of flat damage from Galvanized Aptitude and again with Primary Merciless. I got a Riven. Fire rate, critical chance, multi-shot is not mine. No, I never I never actually have good Rivens. My friends have good Rivens. Me, I gotta roll something a hundred times at least to get something semi-decent. But I guess that's just me. But if you're like me, let me know in the comment section down below. That said, did you notice something about this build? Come on, come on, notice, notice. Did you notice? You didn't notice? It's a gas build! 
Yay, gas is not dead. Well, technically, when you got this much power out of the boss move, you can even build gas, believe it or not. The reason why I want to showcase you the gas build is not because it's better or anything of the sort, simply because it works if you got this specific build. And we're going to be spawning in same targets as before. This being a galvanized setup, you're going to have to get a couple of kills first, however, and you will see the absolute power of this incredible weapon. We already got a couple of stats, go for headshots my friends, look at all those procs and we are able to take out high level targets without any vitals, look at that, you got what is that, 20 slashes on the target, you got the 10 uh, gas procs and a whole bunch of electricity, even without the vital to amplify your damage over time and all whatnot, you're still able to clear high level targets without much issue, how beautiful is that. Of course when it comes to heavily armored targets that's gonna take a little while longer, but if you're gonna use the secondary fire, look at that, look, look what happens when I use the the snakes, I like to call them the snakes because they look like that, on something like uh, infested flesh. Now for the corrupted heavy goon. Boom, boom, boom. 28 to 23 and 10. Absolutely freaking fantastic. But can it stand up to the exo gag? It was a gag, gag, exo gag. We're gonna use the secondary fire to prop these sons up. There we go. Actually, these are ladies, so do bear that one in mind. Look at that, there was like 99, 99 electricity procs. Did you saw that? Tell me you saw that. 99 electricity procs, absolutely friend, fantastic. Of course, you're gonna be getting a lot more procs on the target if you use the secondary fire mode. They're gonna stack up a lot, lot quicker. So that's what a gas build can do. So if you're tired, I know, I know you are. Bro, I'm tired of vital munitions on freaking everything. Can we play something else? Try this. It's gas, it's not, it's not as powerful, but at least it's something different. You see different icons on your screen. Doesn't really make a difference in the way you play it, but hey, it's different. Now back to Viral. Back to Viral, my friends, because this one is more powerful. So it's a simple change. You simply take rhyme rounds and you uh, replace Fermite rounds in the build. Was that, was that it? Hold on, was that it? Was that it? it was, uh, 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 good. Now, same targets as before, so you can see the difference in performance. This is the actual strongest build obviously we're gonna take out a couple of targets using our secondary fire now we got vital on the target that's gonna mean amplification for our damage over time absolutely bloody fantastic look at this and now you apply the slashes but look at that i mean the difference in performance is humongous. you can't even do you even can you even do you even look at that You just bzzzt and it disappears. You see, this is why I normally don't really spend a whole lot of time showcasing other builds outside of Vital Slash because most of the time, not always, it depends on the weapon, but most of the time it is just so far better than anything else. And you can blame me all you want, it's not my bad, you can ask the developer for some goddamn build diversity. I would love some, truly I would. My friends, this is the power of the boss move. It is absolutely bloody insane. Did I show you my ribbon? I hope I did. The last time I forgot to show you my ribbon. Here you go. It's fire rate, critical chance, and multi-shot. You can roll better. You can roll better, my friends. Definitely you can. Now, I don't know what you're gonna say, bro. Anybody can shoot standing steel targets and all whatnot. Well, let's head on over to the path of steel. Now, you notice what I have with me there. She is the darling. I got the Panzer Vulpophila, and the Panzer Vulpophila, my friend, will get you those vital procs, which means I build gas on my weapon again, because right now, my friends, thanks to the Panzer Vulpophila, I got vital procs, which means I got vital, I got electricity, I got slash, I got gas, I got heat, I got essentially everything to put into my targets. Now, of course, uh, I know what you're gonna say, and you're probably right. Listen, the reliability of those vital procs from the <laughs> Vulpophila are not exactly fantastic, and you would be right. If you actually pause and see how these targets die, most of them will be dying without the vital proc on. But the point is, when you're gonna meet that beef target in the levels in the thousands, there's gonna be plenty of time for your Vulpophila to apply those vital procs. And then you hit him with the slash, with the heat, with the electricity, and of course, with the gas. You gotta give him the gas as well and it's gonna absolutely melt of course these targets absolutely melt is not a big deal you can essentially blow anything and everything up in just a matter of where did you go a couple of seconds as you can see my friends when it comes to steel path it doesn't pose a problem for the basmo honestly it does not especially if you want to go this route yes you will be reliant on the panzer vulpophila which is not something that i that i feel comfortable recommending because she's a little bit on the slow side but again when it comes to the beef target the beef target that the only target that does actually matter let's be honest here you're gonna have no problem whatsoever as for everybody else well is there anything else left to say we can go back to the simulacrum and I can show you a few more Warframe synergies. Well, one more. 
And this time we're gonna be going for Lord Harrow simply because I wanna make use out of that ultra high critical multiplier, man. I mean, take a look at it. Take a look at 10.6. How could I not? How could I not? Of course, in this case, I could amp up the critical damage even further, but honestly, what am I gonna drop? Am I gonna drop gas? I don't wanna drop gas. Do you wanna drop gas? You see what I am? I'm sorry. Anyway, there's really nothing I wanna drop here, so we're gonna go like so. When it comes to heavily armored targets, get yourself some corrosive projection if you want to. Honestly, it's not mandatory or anything of the sort, especially considering it's not as powerful as it used to be. And if the aura is that important to you, simply go for the aura of your choosing. Maybe your build needs rejuvenation, shield disruption, or if you're newer in Warframe, I think that energy siphon will be your best friend. When it comes to arcanes, these are a lot, a lot more impactful. I wish we would have a primary arcane that would help with ammo, but we don't. Sell. We have for secondaries, though. We do have that. Arcane Adventure is gonna be a easy choice even with Harrow simply because you are going to be getting a whole lot of body shots and Harrow gives you 200% but for headshot on body shot maxed out you're looking at only 50% so I would recommend you keep Avenger. As for your primary arcane honestly this one should be dedicated to your Warframe something like your Energize and all whatnot. Now granted you can go with Arcane Rage and get even more raw damage if you need to you don't really need to at this point what about some acceleration arcane acceleration you can go with this one you're gonna get that beautiful fire rate but the thing is careful you gotta get used to it you get it especially that heroes 2 will get you fire rate and reload speed as well don't over push the trigger so you go into the reload you get how that one works we're gonna try it like so because it is warframe buffs as before we're gonna be using the panzer volpophila and the vital proc since i'm building gas on my weapon we're gonna be unpausing there so they can hit. The problem is if I unpause these bastards, they're gonna start fighting each other. Fine, here, go fight each other. <laughs> and as per usual, we're gonna activate Harrow's 4th ability, Convenon. This saves your entire party, gives you no thanks, invulnerability, and this will get you that Miami crit as well if you manage to stack it. Harrow's second ability, fire rate, reload speed. And if you haven't looked, my AoE clear god Harrow, I'm serious. Link the cards right now for a full and detailed build guide. You can make Harrow into an AoE monster, and no, I am not kidding. No, I got my buff! I gotta go for headshots, and when it comes to a headshot in the MOA, that's the fanny pack. You gotta hit the fanny pack. Beautiful. But of course, if I wanna use that critical multiplier, I wanna use the secondary fire rate of this gun. On the second fire rate, secondary fire rate, we're gonna be able to leverage that plus 10 uh, critical multiplier as you can see it gets the job done definitely but i would still go for primary fire like so it's simply more satisfying and most of the time it's going to be more effective as well unless of course you want to use it to pr uh, prep your targets it's harder to get a headshot because uh, the beam latches on which is a good thing and a bad thing because it's harder to get the actual headshot to get the full buff out of harrow so do bear that one in mind what else is there to say about the boss move? It's an amazing weapon that everybody should own. Like right now, go get it and enjoy it. It's an absolutely ugly weapon from a subjective point of view, but it plays like a dream and it's definitely more than capable. As always, my name is Belazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. And if you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. You can also catch me on Twitch, we're doing live streams for Warframe and stuff, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Discord, all the usual places. And hey, if you love the content and you want to help us keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There will be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right now and in the description as well. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!